So we at uh, Arm TechCon 2011. And uh, are you the CEO of Arm Inc? Or what do you say? Uh, so I, I head up uh, Arm's US um, uh, entity, which is called Arm Inc. Uh, technically, I'm the CEO and president of Arm Inc. Um, uh, and I also run the physical IP division in Arm. That's that's the main job. So. What does that mean, that uh, you're the CEO just of the American part of ARM? Yeah, so if you look at ARM's corporate structure, we have multiple subsidiaries under ARM Limited. Uh, ARM Inc. is the U.S. entity, so everybody in the U.S. is employed by ARM Inc. Uh, that needs somebody to head that up, and that's what I do. Is it somehow independent from the UK part? No, 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 absolutely not. I mean, the way ARM uh, runs structurally, you know, the, the underlying legal entities are completely invisible to the way we run the company. We're organized by divisions um, who, who develop the products and market them and sell them. Um, and then we have various functions that cut across. So we have a unified corporate marketing team, unified sales team. Uh, the underlying uh, corporate structure is, is not particularly relevant to how we run the company day to day. And where are most of the engineers, or most of the most talented engineers? Are they mostly in the UK or in the US, or both? Well, I'd like to think that uh, all arms engineers are, are equally talented. Uh, we have engineering distributed really across the world. Uh, we have, uh, in total, ARM has about 500 employees in the US. Uh, in the UK, it's much more than that. It's about um, 900, I think it is. Um, we have a large team in Bangalore, in India, uh, about 300 engineers there. Uh, we have teams in France in a couple of locations, uh, and we have a relatively small team in China as well. So we have engineers uh, all around the world. And uh, this is uh, some of the most advanced, highly technical work you can do on the, on the planet? Uh, we like to think so. I mean, we have people designing 20 nanometer uh, physical IP right now, people looking at uh, future transistor structures, uh, and we're developing you know, some of the most sophisticated microprocessors on, on the planet. So here at the ARM Tech Technology Conference, there's uh, lots of partners around, lots of booths all, all the way around. There's both EDA and chip makers, and uh, is, is, they, is, a, is it growing? There's more and more partners? Absolutely. The um, number of partners in our com connected community is growing. We now have over 900 members of that, and the font size we're using on the logo charts uh, is getting pretty small these days, just so we can show everyone. Uh, the number of attendees at this conference has gone up significantly this year compared to last. On the first day alone this week, uh, I think we had more people on that day than we had at the very first uh, Arm TechCon that we did uh, seven years ago. So yeah, we're very happy about the way that the partnership is growing. So do you need to have a lot of employees just taking care of making sure all your partners are happy? How does that work? How, how, how can they, they all want to be part of the upcoming thing, right? Mm -hmm. And how, how do you share the IP, this kind of secret IP for the future and make everybody happy about where they are and what they can do? Well, Arm's a pretty open company. I mean, obviously, for supporting our, our direct customers, our, our sales team, our support team, that all scales with the size of our um, overall customer base. In terms of the partners, we have a relatively small team who spend their time going around, you know, making sure the connected community uh, members are, are get, getting able, getting access to the information they need from Arm so that they can grow their businesses and be successful um, around the Arm community. So. ARM is very successful. Thank you very much. And uh, is there any risk that ARM becomes too successful? How many chips have you shipped <laughs> last year? And uh, is it growing? And where's, how, how, what's the limit? So uh, last year, total number of uh, ARM processor-based uh, chips that were sold were um, over 6 billion, 6.1 billion. Uh, if you look at our results that we just did uh, earlier this week, it was 1.9 billion in uh, Q2 last year, uh, units that were shipped in Q2 in 2011. Um, I don't know what the limit for that is. I mean, the demand for semiconductors is going up and up. That's the great thing about uh, the, the ARM model. We're able to uh, work with partners, uh, license our technology to them, and then they can compete in an ever-growing market. But is Intel jealous? Well, you'd have to ask them that, but uh, if you look at the way they're driving their technology, uh, they, they appear to be very interested in the markets in which ARM and the ARM partnership uh, uh, operates. And it's... Uh it's thanks to ARM that uh, Apple is the biggest company in the world, right? Uh, I don't think they'd say that at all. Um, really, you'd have to have a conversation with Apple. Because there's an iPod and an iPhone, all ARM-powered, and that's, that brings them huge profit margins, which is hard to do with the x86. Well, um, Apple is a very profitable company. Um, you know, really go have a conversation with them about how they're achieving that. But uh, they're, they're certainly a very special company right now. So how do, how do, you, uh, how do you help your partners to make more profits? Well, I think ARM's business model generally is geared up for um, sharing of profit, sharing of risk. 
you know, our license fees we like to think of as pretty modest. The, the royalties that we uh, extract from the chips that are sold are, are pretty modest. Um, that enables us to fuel our R&D, enables us to fuel the uh, connected community and the, and the ecosystem, and it allows um, our customers to, to build chips in an economic way and for their customers to have lots of choice. Um, so we think that that is structurally helping uh, lower the cost of electronics and, and high-tech products. And uh, the evolution is going so fast. There's already our, the Cortex A15 you're showing. You just launched the A7, mm -hmm. and you just talked about the V8. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the great thing about uh, high-tech electronics. It moves very, very quickly. Uh, we announced Cortex A15 about a year ago, just over a year ago, uh, and now we're able to demonstrate silicon here. Um, our partners are working very hard to uh, build devices that their customers want to buy, um, and there is a uh, ever-growing opportunity. Cortex A7, we think, is going to really make a, a difference to how some of these chips are built, um, and so we can lower power. Uh, the version 8 architecture that we uh, announced today introduces 64-bit into the ARM architecture for the first time, and we think that's going to help grow the market opportunity uh, for ARM uh, and for the ARM partnership. So uh, all, the, all your partners are interested to see ARM be as successful as possible, like hugely successful, mm -hmm. and when you design the, next, the future chips, you, you ask them or you, talk, you work with them on designing it, right? How do you share mm -hmm. IP? How do you... Like, how do you do the... Okay, how the do we manage that? Yeah. I mean, we, we, in a number of ways. Um, we have a, a fairly large number of people in ARM who are working with our customers day to day, uh, understanding their roadmaps, their requirements, um, talking about what we're thinking of, uh, and sharing information around that. Um, we then have a team of people who go talk to our customers' customers and uh, to, to understand market trends. Uh, they go and operate in uh, standards bodies, um, go and operate all around the industry so that we can understand you know, where wireless is going, where automotive is going, where security is going. Um, and then we, we take that back into um, our product roadmaps uh, and drive our, our products forwards in that way. So the ARM Trust Zone is going to be in all smartphones? Uh, hopefully. I don't know about all Trust Zones, but uh, hopefully I think Trust Zone is a great technology uh, for securing very personal data that's going to be in everyone's smartphone pretty soon now. Do you think uh, we'll have uh, lots of ARM powered laptops? Set-top boxes going to go up also? Set-top boxes for sure. Uh, laptops, I, I certainly like to think so. I mean, if you look at a Cortex A15, a very high performance processor, I think in a multi-core uh, implementation, uh, you can deliver some quite serious uh, uh, compute power in a very low uh, energy consumption uh, envelope. So I think that's going to yield some pretty interesting products. The Mali 400 and, and, and T604s, mm -hmm. the, the graphics are amazing. And it's in a phone, so it's very disruptive for the whole console gaming industry. If you can connect it to HDTV, uh -huh. there's lots of disruption going on, right? Absolutely. I mean, gaming is clearly moving to, to mobile platforms. Uh, we, with uh, the Mali cores, you know, we're, we're delivering some quite serious uh, graphics capability. And as you say, you can now easily hook that up to an HDTV and get a, a phenomenal uh, visual experience. It's very impressive. So, do you meet uh, with Google often, and what do you talk with them about, for example? Um, I don't personally. We have other people who, uh, who, who go to, to Google and our software partners more. Because they'd be Not interested really. to optimize Android for each of the different arms, and uh, they, they, they probably work with the partners. I mean, if you that. look generally at, uh, at operating systems and software, we have engineers who go and engage with our key partners to make sure that the latest features of the ARM architecture are being exploited by software. You know, we always say you can put all the bells and whistles you want in your processor that you like, but if software never uses them, then that's a complete waste of time. So we make sure that we engage with uh, the key operating system vendors, key application developers, uh, to make sure that they do uh, leverage all the features of the ARM architecture. And again, so we can understand their future needs so that we can get those features right in the first place. And you invest more and more in Linaro to get uh, ARM laptops, uh, servers, Certainly, Lenara is a very important activity for us. Um, it's a great example of the partnership coming together, of sharing resources uh, to make sure that we're solving problems once at source, instead of having everybody uh, solve the same problem multiple times. That's just inefficient. So Lenara is a great way of, uh, again, helping lowering cost for anyone who wants to build a, a Linux-based ARM platform.